Greetings to you all, and welcome back to Let's Play the Langrizer with me, Artega Omega. Now then, let's attack with Erwin and all of his might straight through this ballista. Gotta be careful, I don't want to kill the mage woman just yet because of experience to be had. And that's really annoying that we lost that one grenadier so early on because it means we're not going to finish off the ballistas. We somehow, with their 13 defense, managed to block a 39 attack. Don't understand that, but all right. We'll just go toe to toe with these chaps. Erwin should be able to handle it without taking much damage. Superbly done, Erwin. Thanks for that. And we're basically going to have to try and cause as much carnage as we can. Now, there's a couple of ballistas that we can't reach because we're incredibly slow in the water. Wonderful. Oh, wait, we can attack those guys. We'll give it a go, why not? Now, foot soldiers aren't particularly good against water units, especially when they're in the water, so I expect a loss here. I despair at my ability to call fights before they happen. Well played, Erwin! There we go, that's more like it. Good grief, I got that wrong. Nonetheless, we'll keep, keep on going, keep on attacking. Man, it's no threat for the mighty grenadiers that can walk their way straight through anything for some reason. Phalanx obviously have more defense than grenadiers, but to me, grenadiers seem really tanky units. But we can't get any closer than we currently are, so we'll just sit where we are. Seems a logical thing to do when you can't get any closer. And we'll charge downwards with Cherie, who's gonna go a bit waterbound, but. Going to go across the bridge as much as she can. Because she'll obviously slow down horrifically when she gets in the water. And that's her units are going to try and help out Keith for being overrun. Because they'll be pretty good against the flying units. Sure, he does give very good attack bonuses after all. Which means it is great for archers. Not so great against the Leviathans, though. But she'll give it a go. Of course she will. When the first three died, I thought it was going to be a complete whitewash, and it would just prove me wrong once again. Thankfully, we didn't win that fight. Yeah, it's not very often you see me saying that, but there we go. The game's trying to make a fool of me, so it's good it didn't. Yes, that's a story I'll stick with. Right then, on we go. We can kill a couple of leviathans off with some of our angels now. Leviathans at the bottom here are a lot harder to take out than the Leviathans were at the top because Nixies are superb against them, for some bizarre reason. Whereas Angels have respectable stats and whatnot, but these guys have a lot of defense. And we'll do what we can. Not sure why we have a couple down there. We'll go for that weakened one, why not? Incredibly large command aura still coming from that necklace, so a big thanks to that. With respectable experience, but not great on the little Viathans. Still, any any experience is worth taking. Should know my feelings on this by now. Experience for all. And that's a respectably decent fight. We'll happily accept that. Now, is that everyone done for this turn? I believe it is. Oh, we have one archer all by himself. Well, oh, down you come. And we shall end that turn and watch the computer's long slog of forcing all the ranged units to attack. They are starting to run out of units, of course, so it's getting slightly quicker now. One angel being slowly whittled down, one HP a turn. Eventually it's going to die, unless I pull it back, or heal it, or kill everything. So, unlikely to die then. But Imelda thinks she's having some kind of impact, so she's going to keep going. Hey, if the first group of archers can't damage it, maybe the second can. They can damage it, of course, but they can't kill it. That's the important point that Imelda's missed. Didn't account for that. That's a shame. We are going to take some big casualties here, because 16 defense isn't going to cut it against ballistas. Might block one if we're lucky. Yes, yeah, cooled perfectly. Look at that. Now we're back on form. 
Admittedly, we made a mistake, otherwise that fight never would have taken place. But we're on form with calling the outcome. I would say the same again. Come on, come on. Curses! No, right, whatever, using a couple of archers is absolutely fine. Oh, sh losing Cherie wouldn't be fine. I only just noticed that Cherie's in a very dangerous spot to ballista fire. We need to take down these enemy ballistas as fast as we can. That's clear to me. I was going to do it that turn, but I couldn't get across the bridge with Erwin because one of my grenadiers failed me. And the Mesper should be over there next turn. That'd be great. That woman's going to die. This guy's going to flit about aimlessly. Wonderful. May move Hain forward. I want him to be able to toss spells towards the bottom fight. And in order to make him cast spells in a more downwards direction, I'm going to move him rightwards. That's a great plan. So it looks like he's finally managed to stabilise his hit points. And he's very, very thankful for that, of course. Nice formation there. Trapping that one angel. That's good play. I'll be able to slowly put that thing down now. Not sure what these chaps are up to. Doesn't look like a good plan, anyway. I have changed my mind, and we'll keep Aaron up at the top fighting the sea, because I can't be bothered to move him. The old Aaron. And first things first, we're going to take down some of these damned ballistas. Let's get rid of them. Even Erwin is letting me down now. 47 attack versus 13 defense. That's, that's incredibly unlucky. Oh well, in we go. We need to finish this woman off, so Scott, you pretty much killed all of the forces, so you're welcome to this kill. Plus 15 attack now, so they want Scott, it's very nice. As we said before, Scott also going to have free run with this saint person. He doesn't do anything saintly at all. Made sure he with good experience. That's pretty nice. Third level class, not bad. Even Scott's going to really up his bravery here and take a pop at this Crusader. Crusader's damage not great, but not dreadful. But not enough to damage a Night Master. Bandits are the only real threat to the Dragoons. Bandits can suicide kill Dragoons very slowly, but there's not enough Bandits left to do any damage like that. No Ballistas for backup pretty much means we're in a uh, nice situation now. Hopefully Haynes Ballistas will be able to pick off a couple of kills, maybe some Crusaders. Which is worth pretty good experience. They are a second level of purchasable unit, which is a long sentence. But all second level purchasable units are worth pretty good experience. Depends whether or not you count the ballistas. Ballistas are like one and a half level purchasable units, and they're not worth good experience at all. There is no advanced ballista if anybody's wondering about that. Ballistas is as good as it gets. There's archers and advanced archers, or elves and high elves, but then there's just Ballista, which sits somewhere in the middle on its own. Nonetheless, good progress being made by the team here. This saint is going to die next turn, it would seem. Every person I kill means one less person we have to look at on the enemy's turn. And that's a superb victory, a well played Hain. Hain, of course, will be able to toss some spells next turn as well, so that's another advantage.
could go for that. But I think the Grenadiers will be absolutely fine against that Ballista. I'm going to go for this Bandit, just because I can. And I have more chance of killing the Bandits than the Crusaders. Bandits also not really a second level of unit, but kind of are. They're second level of the worst unit class, so their experience isn't great. Now let's, let's get, get rid of the thorns that have been on our side all game long. We can finally bring them down very slowly. There we go. One guy facing the wrong way when he died. Not sure what was going on there. Maybe he tried to flee at the last second. Would be a sensible move. But we've well and truly boarded their boat, which is odd considering they ambushed us, that they did no attacking. They just sat there on their boat. So this will be fine. This is how we ambush. Nonetheless, we now have got them completely overrun and we'll be able to steal their boat and have two boats, even though we don't need two boats. In all honesty, we don't need one boat. We have a dragon, but still, we can have two boats. That'd be nice. Maybe we could sell it for some pee. Who knows? Not sure who's giving us this pee when we kill the units. Maybe we're finding it from their corpses, but whatever. I'm not giving much thought to it. We'll favour the Ballista over the Archer, because the Archers can only attack Angels and Grenadiers, which they'll never damage. Whereas the Ballistas might be able to fluke a shot at someone like Cherie or some Archers. We don't want that to happen. Not sure what I'm going to do with that final Grenadier, but this chap's going to take a pop at these bandits. May take some casualties. Grenadier on bandit, but we win the fight, certainly. Won't take many casualties if we take any. Nice, nice escape there. Nearly called it completely wrong. Does mean we can. No, we can't. I thought we could stand there and finish off the last of the Crusaders, but we can't. So we'll just have to. Just leave you where you are for now, I suppose. Perfectly nice position. We're going to need to make sure Shuri's surrounded so she doesn't get killed by griffins. One more heal for Keith. And let's get Shuri's units into the fight. You can shoot already, I do believe. Very slowly. Now, I do like the way griffins explode in mid-air. Anything that resembles a horse has to blow up. That's the rule. Even if it's in mid-air, it has to blow up. Just an arrow hitting it into its torso makes it blow up in an explosion of flames. Makes no sense, but it's great fun, and I'm glad they kept the theme going for all the units. I love it. So, more experience for Cherie is always handy. More experience for anyone's always handy, apart from Liana, and she's completely abandoned us, and that's great. What else am I likely to be able to attack? Are there any ballistas at all left? No, we should be alright. Saying so that, that probably means I'm going to get attacked by flying units and die. But whatever. We need the heals, you can stand there. Tell you what, Keith, you're supposed to protect Cherie. Let one of your angels go on guard duty just to make sure she doesn't get sniped by something I haven't spotted. You need a heal, in all honesty. I don't need to protect Keith anymore, because he's back to 10 HP. I need to kill Ballistas, because I hate them and they are evil swine. And then I'm going to pick off a unit that's severely wounded. Which, really, you can't say without sounding cruel. I have noticed there is a Leviathan, not a Leviathan, a Griffin, on 1 HP. That means it has a tenth of its life left. It is practically dead. I'm going to go attack it with 10 Angels. Seems cruel. But it's Keith, that's the kind of man he is. But hey, we're making good progress now. I don't think anyone's going to argue against that. Oh, the units in the sea still to go. Hopefully we'll knock some of those down with a bit faster speed. Oh, we have an angel. I'm going to use this angel to attack. Am I going to attack this? Or am I going to attack this? Find out next video. Hopefully, I'll see you then.